Six has made 13 threes. Brooklyn ended up with seven. Here's Maxi, the three-point king in this game. Tyrese, Tom McGinnis, along with Mark Jackson. Thank you. Great win for your guys. Your thoughts in the wake of this victory over the Nets? Uh, that's a big uh, big win. Um, you know, this, we had a long seven-day road trip, um, and we wanted to go 3-0. We wanted to go 3-0. Uh, Coach Doc went down. We had a couple players, uh, you know, in the protocols, and uh, we wanted to come here and make a statement. Uh, they already beat us twice, so uh, to come here and get a, a win on, on their court is big. Max and Mark Jackson here. Let's talk about the third quarter when y'all have us down seven and you and Yang get hot from the three. Let's talk about your development in a three-point game and how it's helped this team. Uh, yeah, I mean, no, I know playing with Joel and Tobias and Seth, um, it's going to be key for me to knock down open shots. And, uh, and uh, I've just been working, been grinding, grinding all summer. Um, you know, last game, Joel told me I was trash. He told me I was trash. <laughs> <laughs> He told me I was trash last game, and I told him I got him this game. And, uh, hey, I just went out here and tried my hardest for my teammates. Tyrese, you were great in the third, but down the stretch, man, unbelievable. And you were getting those looks. It looked like you were totally going back to that muscle memory, setting up and really knocking down those threes with great form and that, that look right there in the corner. Oh, yeah, man. Like I said, I, I know playing with Seth. Um, Joel and Tobias, I'm going to get open looks. And uh, it's a key, like you said, it's key for me to be able to drive the closeouts and find people and knock down wide open threes. Max, you got to ask you a question. I'm from Philly, and we have a phrase, we want the smoke. A lot of chatter going on there. You're a young guy, man. It's on your second year in the league. How do you feel about getting when that game gets a little chippy like that? How does that make you feel? Ah, man, it's all good. It's a part of it. Uh, it's a lot of competitors out there. Nobody want to lose. Uh, it's a big game, uh, Eastern Conference game. And, uh, you know, we both know we're probably going to have to go through each other to get to where we want to be. So, uh, you know, these games matter, and uh, we just go at each other. And how about that? for a statement win by your 76ers up in Brooklyn, taking down the top seed right now in the East as we welcome you here. Insider Studios, Amy Fiddle, Jim Line, and this is Sixers Post Game Live, brought to you by Cure Auto Insurance. And Jimmy, I know we've had a lot of talks about maybe some bad losses of the year, but this might be one of the best wins of the year. Uh, I don't think any question, Aim. Uh, and to me, this game, thing came down to one main thought. Uh, down the stretch, this game was tied at uh, 97 all. And in the last three minutes plus, the 76ers, they just put it to the Nets. Mm -hmm. They were the better team. They outscored them 13-5 going down the stretch with some very timely three-point shooting. And as our producer, Brian Brennan, just dropped in my ear, when the 76ers outshoot the opposition from three, their 12 wins, one loss. Mm. Shows you how dependent and how important that three-point shooting is for this team. To your point, Kevin Durant made a bucket that made it 199. They didn't score, the Nets didn't score another field goal in the last three minutes. Just a couple of free throws from James Harden. The Sixers ended that one on a 13 to five run. Well, who else was bigger besides Joel Embiid for this one for the Sixers? You gotta talk about Tyrese Maxey. He is our Colonial Nissan game changer and rightfully so. Jimmy, the knock on him coming out of college that he couldn't shoot the three. Well, he made five threes tonight, career high for him, but he had it going on more ways than one from beyond the perimeter. He sure did. I thought he had a solid first half, but uh, boy, for a young guy like this to come up huge down the stretch, two big threes, and I think the dagger or that little baseline jumper, uh, just a sensational uh, effort by him. And it just seems to aim that the moment is never too big for him. Mm -hmm. And here, when you know when his teammates, that's drumming out of the post there, little traffic in, in low, kicks it out to him in the corner, and he confidently knocks it down, and he feels so good, he actually takes that one behind the little screen coming out of the backcourt. There's a couple that he, uh, he drove in as well after the threes. The good thing is you're seeing a lot of aspects from his game because we always thought of him as a slasher, but these are all jumpers. These are all jump shots. Yeah, he said uh, you know, in his little post-game thought there that uh, he knew how important it was for him to develop his three-point shot. He's going to get a lot of looks because of the attention the defense is going to pay when they double Joel. Mm -hmm. And if you're the other team, the first guy you're going to get to is Seth Curry. He's the most dangerous and the highest percenting three-point shooter for the Sixers. So guys like Maxie are going to get open looks. And he showed tonight he's more than capable of knocking them down. 
five threes for him, 25 points in the win over the Nets for Tyrese Maxey. Let's cross it over. Brought to you by WebEx by Cisco. And welcome in the gentleman who called this win. That would be Tom McGinnis and Mark Jackson. And guys, you know, you're starting to think about it. When you, heard, you saw Kevin Durant hit that shot with three minutes ago, we all kind of had a little bit of that deja vu from two weeks ago. But the Sixers closed it out. Such a big win on the road. Tom, especially down the stretch, we know what Joel Embiid can do. But Tyrese Maxey, what a game from him. Maxie did a great job, so confident, and to your point, Amy, he starts making this outside shot with his ability to drive. Now teams got to change how they guard him. Everybody goes underneath on pick and roll with Maxie, but tonight, a lot of those were open looks, and he was nailing them. He had a great game, and credit Thibel with some of the defense down the stretch, Curry with the passes. Even Tobias didn't score a lot down the stretch, but did a lot of little things, and Mark, you want to bring the smoke, so you go. Listen, we want all the smoke. Listen, Tyrese Maxey led all six of scores with eight points in the fourth quarter. He brought it. He wanted that heat. We're watching his maturation right in front of our eyes. What's the delight to watch this kid come from Kentucky, a young player, and loan as a slasher, now he's a marksman. What else can he do? Absolutely. He was had it all on display, and the Sixers needed it. A heck of a win. Best game of the year, Mark Jackson? Best win? 100%, Amy. So far. So far, that's right. Tom, we got lots more to go. This one, a great way to end 2021, though. No doubt about it. And geez, for all of us to get into 2022, great Sixers basketball, hopefully, and a lot of things hopefully will turn around a little bit. But certainly, you know, the Sixers, when you listen to Coach Rivers during this chunk of games, they wanted to stay above water. Mm -hmm. They're three games over 500 right now. They're getting the rhythm back. You go back to the 8-2 and two start. They did a lot of positive things. And I thought tonight and on this road trip, you saw a lot of those things, the ball movement, the mm -hmm. defense, the defensive coverages, getting prime play from Embiid in the guts of the game. Maxi played well. You had different moments from different players. Tobias got a triple-double. So all of those things, and now you're starting to get some of your players back, too, off the health and safety protocols list and building and getting some momentum going because it's going to be, you know, a while. And if you can get uh, get going a little bit, get into the thick of things in the top of the standings, you'll be in a, in a good spot. Yeah, it's no coincidence they're starting to get all their pieces back together that you see them playing so well. George Niang, another good game for him yes. off the bench. All right, Tom and Mark Jackson, thanks for joining us. Happy New Year. We'll see you in 2022, guys. Happy New Year, Amy. Thank you. All right, Dan Burke, it's his first win. He was filling in for Doc Rivers tonight. Here is Coach Burke from Brooklyn. In the shower. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's slipping on things, right? But no, guys were guys were excited. They should be excited. They should be happy. They should be happy for the how they stuck together, how they executed. We didn't. I never really liked the term Ben, but don't break. But Durant's making those twos, and Matisse just stuck with it. Stuck with it. You know, we're saying that long those twos probably aren't going to beat us. And then he came up big and challenged a couple of threes. And Joel and uh, Seth combinations good, and we started making extra passes and uh, found corner threes. This is just a good, good, good team win. Happy for Doc and just what he's built, and that everyone's just kind of stepping up, and that's what so makes sports fun. What kind of lifts did uh, did Andre give us off the bench? Oh, oh, every time he's played, he's given us lifts, and he, just the simple fact that he runs the floor. The, the that end of the third quarter, he run to the floor, and you know we're thinking we got a rough offensive unit, but you're on the floor and you, you make extra pass and get him in the paint. And he's always getting his hands on rebounds. And then uh, he protects the paint. And uh, yeah, he's so agile. He's got quick feet, quick hands. And uh, that was a huge lift for us. And what did you make of this, Joel, um, just, from, just from beginning to end? He, uh, I thought he started trusting his teammates more. Um, he wanted to win this. Sometimes when you want to win it so badly, you know, you kind of do it by yourself. I thought he had a good mix, especially in that second half. And, you know, uh, we know we have to play through him. I told him that after the game, and I'm okay, we're okay with him calling the plays. Don't always have to be for him, but we know we got to play through him. And uh, he, uh, again, just keep building the trust with your teammates out there. I just again, I just thought when we started making extra passes, we were just much better. You mentioned you mentioned Joel wanting that one. You could tell there was a lot of emotion across the group there over those final couple of minutes. Yeah. Just, you know, after the game a couple of weeks ago, after kind of everything that's gone on, I imagine it must have felt pretty good to to get one against the team. Oh, you don't know. Yeah, it's it's uh I mean we've been terrific on the road. These guys they 
the focus coming in every road game and we, we, we just got to figure some things out at home and just again cut out the noise and, and focus on your job and I thought that's what we did yeah so, so many I thought the the key was it was all, everything happening we love what we do we got friends and family and, and teammates we're thinking of but when we cross that line it's got to be 48 minutes and uh, it sounds silly it's the most important thing those in those times in today's world but it is most it is important and so I just thought they did that and then to show the elation afterward and the excitement hey winning is always fun but it was special you mentioned before the game that it's those two games stuck with you a couple of years ago when you filled in for Nate I, I imagine this will stick with you in a little different way Oh uh, yeah. yeah, they didn't throw water on me. I jumped in the tub, <laughs> and uh, it's uh, yeah. I don't know what they expect me to do an Irish jig or something. I was staring at me, but uh, it was, it's it's fun. Good, you know. We tell you, I, I don't know if we ever say it enough. We a lot of great character and good and big hearts, and you got a chance every night. You know, both ends. Before the game, also that it was going to be obviously a collective effort with the staff as far as you know, just going through the process of the game. So, just yeah. how do you feel like that went as far as communication and, and, and everything? And maybe what are the biggest things that you can take from tonight, then moving forward for, for the next one? Probably value everybody. Yeah, I, we had a lot of voices and a lot of good stuff. You got to, you know, some stuff you just don't have time to hear, but you know, you, you acknowledge it. But, um, Tyler Lashbrook, Eric Hughes, Dwayne Jones, you know, um, Jamie Young, Jason Love, they, they just, uh, everyone had input. Spencer Rivers had input and uh, Peter Dominguez. Everybody was a part of it. So, I mean, I guess it's no exaggeration. It was a complete team win, you know, so it's, and I needed their help. So it, it seemed like Tyrese did, really did a really good job all of the defensive end against James. I know the numbers don't say it, but I'm sorry. Ty, Tyrese against James on the defensive end. I know the yeah. numbers didn't say it, but it really looked like he was able to kind of get in a little bit. I think you're right. Uh, the key is that Doc has been stressing all year with Tyrese, make him bring it, make him work against pressure, make him work at bringing it up. It doesn't have to be like a steal or anything to turn him, make him use clock. You know, it, it eliminates two more options maybe at the other end, but I thought. You know, you got to quit fouling jump shooters, but the positive is James knows he's there, you know, and uh, as long as Harden knows Tyrese is coming, you know, we got a little bit of a chance, you know, not much, but we'll play the odds on that, you know, but that Tyrese not afraid and that's, that's huge. He's got big heart and a lot of guts and he's coming on. I know you don't want to make this about you, but you've, you've been a lifer in the NBA as an assistant and just everything in your career to sort of get to this point as, as a personal accomplishment, just how, how gratifying it is, is tonight for you. Oh, I, I'm just happy for those guys because, you know, it, I think it's you got four days or so before we play again to catch this win, build some momentum and, uh, you know, I don't know what the protocol is going to allow practice wise, but this is something that I think we can all look at and just say, hey, look, you know, we, we're, we're better when we're like this versus this. And, and you know, this is stronger and, and just, we just got to build that. And, and that's what Doc's been building up to now. So. Doc, did you, uh, did you speak to him on the, after the game or did you have any communication with him at halftime about, you know, things that were uh, uh, transpiring? <laughs> I, know he checks, I know he checks a couple guys and you know just like some things we were doing and re a couple of reminders you know to one of the other coaches yeah i can't wait to talk to him though yeah